And next we go to Deputy Catherine Connolly. You have 20 Nearly. minutes. Um, Minister, I understand what you're trying to do with this bill, and it's to be welcomed within the restricted um, criteria because insurance companies should not be able to pick and choose their age group or what illness they'll treat. So with that re re restricted area, I see what you're trying to do. How however, it certainly will lead to hikes in premiums, without a doubt. Secondly, one can't discuss this bill without putting it in a background. And since the day I came into the Dáil, I've raised the Galway situation, not parochially, but as an example of what's happening to our public health system. And I have to say, Minister, I am disappointed in you, even though you're not there that long. I have repeatedly drawn it to your attention. And let me just preface my remarks by saying I absolutely firmly believe in public health. And I believe with the speakers that have spoken to my left in relation to that matter, and that we're subsidising the private system without a doubt. And we're subsidising the private system in my entire um, life as a local councillor and sitting on the health forum since 2006. Every single initiative from this government and the previous government and the previous government before that, and particularly Fianna Fáil and PDs, I have to say, was to subsidise the private system in every way possible particularly with councillors rezoning land to facilitate private hospitals, with the initiatives brought in, like the National Treatment Purchase Fund, which was channelled public patients into the private system and accounted for a substantial amount of the profits made by the private hospital in Galway, two of them, but one in particular in Dogishka. And actually, without that public money, that private hospital would not have made a profit. I actually was tired tonight and wasn't going to speak on this bill, but I think I could and couldn't possibly not take the opportunity on behalf of the people of Galway who've elected me and those in this country who believe like I do and my people on my left in the public health system and to keep putting pressure on you to realise that private insurance and I feel for the people paying private insurance because really they feel they have no choice and it's based on fear and really it's not based on privilege, although they seek a privilege, all of us holding insurance seek that privilege to get quicker access. But I actually don't blame people for that, because such is their lack of trust in the public system. And so if we look at Galway, practically every week for the last seventh week, the nurses have pointed out in Galway that it's on code black. And code black is the highest level of warning in relation to what's happening in the Galway Hospital, which is a hospital that is known as a centre of excellence and looks after a region for about a million people. 52 patients on trolleys. Now, I say these figures to make general points. The day that this was published, which was just November the 11th, a few days ago, there was a 13-hour backlog reported in the emergency department. At 4 p.m. on that Wednesday morning, a 90-year-old patient had entered her 80th hour, her 80th hour on a trolley waiting for a bed. Staff were operating out of a single cubicle in the department to deal with life and death cases, as all others in the 12-unit facility were taken up by patients in the queue for the wards. That was the 11th. The previous statement I made here when I raised it last week, when I raised it with the Taoiseach, and I have his reply, and it makes no sense. And I actually printed out the reply to see was I mistaken. And the Taoiseach made absolutely no sense when I asked him to step outside of the rhetoric, to step out of the bland assurances and deal with the crisis in Galway. And the reply he gave is on the record, and it made no sense, Minister. And on that day, I quoted full capacity protocol every day in the Galway Hospital, code black. Yesterday, at that point when I raised it, f four people for access to the resuscitation room. In other words, there was a queue and a waiting list for the resuscitation room in Galway Hospital in the Centre of Excellence, serving counties Donegal down to Roscommon, Galway, Mayo and so on. Elective procedures cancelled on a regular basis. Cancer clinics cancelled on a regular basis. Somebody having an appointment on Tuesday, getting a phone call on a Friday evening. And irony of irony, 
please only attend the emergency department in the case of emergencies. There the warnings be given out. Savita, as we know, died, tragically died at the end of 2012. Subsequently, recommendations were put in place, including additional uh, staff. Since then, two senior midwifery experts have resigned, and the statement from Sailtha was they were concerned. No idea what has happened in relation to that. Galway Bay FM Newsroom. A review has been launched at University Hospital Galway. Just, Minister, if I could have your attention just for this one. Just, I, oh, no, I, I realise just for this one, because you, you won't believe this one. A review has been launched at University Hospital Galway after an amputation was performed in a general ward yesterday. Now, that was on the 15th of October. A review has been launched at the hospital after an amputation was performed in a general ward yesterday. Medical protocols normally require that amputations take place under sterile conditions and under anaesthetic in a scheduled theatre. Sailtha says it cannot outline the circumstances of the incident due to patient confidentiality, but it has confirmed that the incident did occur on Friday and so on. And an inquiry, I'm not sure where that inquiry rests at the moment. And so, why is this happening? because there has been a sustained running down of the public hospital in Galway and other public hospitals in this country, while at the same time there has been a sustained investment in private hospitals. Quite extraordinary. The Taoiseach, I think, was in Galway lately, and he said that he would visit the hospital when he had time. Prior to the election, quote unquote, last Friday or Thursday, Prior to the election, he described the accident and emergency as not fit for purpose. The leader of Fianna Fáil described it as not fit for purchase. Post-election, the Taoiseach said he'll visit it when he has time. But Fine Gael had time to visit Galway and open a new wing or a new ward or a new something in the private hospital in the last 14 days. But they didn't have time to go into the public hospital and witness firsthand what's happening. I understand today a presentation was made to the committee in relation to the need for a new hospital. I quoted repeatedly since I came here, to, and I've asked you, Minister, and I've asked the Taoiseach in relation to a new hospital in Galway. There are no plans for a new hospital to be built in Galway, amongst a bland reply on the 12th of July. I have raised it consistently since then, and just to be fair to the Taoiseach, when I raised it on the 9th of November, and I asked about a new hospital. He, he replied, the deputy has asked me to confirm the status of a new accident and emergency department and a new hospital. And he goes on to say, a new accident and emergency department was built at Wexford Hospital, which is in Deputy Howland's constituency, quote, unquote. That's, that's the beginning of his reply. And he goes on then to say, uh, it, it talks to the... Um, Cancorla, because I was being a bit obstreperous, naturally, after a reply like that, where he goes on to Wexford. And uh, he then goes on to tell us there are no trolleys in the emergency department at Wexford Hospital, and so on. I don't know what the Taoiseach was saying. I think he was speaking English, and perhaps you could translate it for me. I don't know. That was the reply. So consistently since I came, I've asked. And the reason I've done that, A, of my own personal experience with family members, Secondly, in relation to my experience as a local councillor sitting on a health forum, consistently asking four questions every two months. And thirdly, because finally the clinical director of the hospital last year and the manager said that a new hospital was absolutely essential. And they said that the lack of capacity in the regional hospital was the number one risk factor on their risk charter. Number one, the capacity of the hospital. I think that has been repeated today in the presentation, the urgency of a new hospital in Galway. Now, I don't know how often we have to say it, and actually, and unfortunately, I will be coming back to a further investigation that's underway, or has just been completed in Galway, in relation to another matter, very serious, that has arisen in addition to the ones I've read out, and in addition to Savita Halapanar. 
have happened ever. So, to make general points, I think we're all lessened in this stall if we don't have a public system for everybody. And if our health and our health services are based not on need, but on the one's ability to pay or one's ability to have private health insurance, then we're in serious trouble as a civilised society. And I have seen no attempt, other than the committee that has been set up, which we all agree to, to look at the health service in any urgent matter, or to commit to a public health service based on our taxes, that will give a health service based on need that we all deserve, and that private insurance should be for private hospitals and for those that wish to have a sp special room or a special suite, and so be it. But what we want is a first-class health service, and not to go from crisis to crisis, or not to channel public money into the private system like we've done on a consistent basis, or not fee to clap each other on the back and say, you've put 20 or 30 million into the National Treatment Purchase Fund. I've watched that and I've watched the special delivery unit and I've kept a close eye on the profits of the private hospitals on public money. And I would appeal to you today to visit the regional hospital in Galway, not for the accident and emergency, which is simply a symptom of the overall problem. And every single good doctor down there has admitted that and they despair of the constant talk of the crisis in the accident and emergency, which is simply a symptom of over-congestion on an over-congested site in relation to a car park, in relation to services. And to commit to the planning for a hospital on the 150-acre site in Merlin Park, which is a stone's throw from the regional. That's the first thing I would ask. The second thing, to have an immediate and urgent report as to what is necessary in terms of staff in Galway so that they can have a public health service. There was one final, I was going to say anecdote, but it's a fact. In the last two weeks, patients were scheduled to have um, procedures in relation to kidney stones and other procedures. Because the theatre was closed, the consultant in charge gave the patients a choice of going into his car and going to the private hospital to have the procedure. And they willingly took him up on this and got into his car and went to the private hospital to have the procedures and went back into the public system in an ambulance and were discharged subsequently. We're delighted. That is what the doctor resorted to on that occasion. All of these happened in the last few weeks. I have no idea what you have done since I asked you in relation to a pub, the building of a new hospital. You assured me you were meeting with management. Management have now publicly today come out what they said months ago about the need for a public hospital and the fact that the regional hospital is simply not fit for purpose. And as a result of not being fit for purpose, the staff are under enormous strain and mistakes are being made. A point I'll be returning to next week. So I don't know, Minister, can you hear that, number one? And that would be something just to hear it. And it would be marvellous if you committed to a public health system and private health insurance for private hospitals, if that's people want and they want their rooms, but that we have a public health system on our public taxes and that we take on board that the regional hospital in Galway is simply not fit for purpose and not just the accident and emergency.